Today we're going to be talking about the Honors Algebra 2 Chapter 2 study questions, getting ready for that test. And here we go. Graph the function, describe its transformation. Let's first talk about describing. The negative sign out in front means a reflection on the x axis. Multiplication out in front of the parentheses means you're talking about a vertical shrink. Ooh, the spelling there. Hold on. Shrink by a factor of one third. And now you're talking about a translation to the left, two, and down, four. Graphing, the vertex again is at negative two, negative four. So negative two, negative four is the vertex. Now, I do a, you can do an XY chart. You can use a graphic calculator to help you graph this. I use a counting method, 1, 2, 3, um, be 9A, 1, 2, 3. And the rest of the points will go off the graph downward as such. Next one. Now I just want you to actually do the transformation. So reflection on the x-axis means you take this entire function negative. So that would make a positive x minus 4 squared minus 2. Notice that I did not distribute into the parentheses being squared. And then a translation left, 3, means, means you replace the um, x with x plus 3. So x minus 1 quantity squared minus 2 is the g function that they're looking for. Next one, I'm going to do a horizontal stretch by a factor of 3. That means I replace x with 1 third x. Notice that I don't touch anything else. Then a translation down 2 means you're going to take the entire function minus 2, which means really all you're doing is subtracting it at the end there. So 1 third x plus 5 squared minus 9 is the g function. Vertical, stress, vertical shrink by a half means, again, you're taking the entire function times a half, which makes negative a half, x minus 4 quantity squared plus 1. Notice that I multiplied both the first term and the last term by a half, and I did not distribute into the parentheses. And then a reflection on the y-axis means you're replacing x with negative x. And that'll give you your g function. Now comes for probably the biggest section on the entire test, which would be graph the quadratic, state the vertex, the axis of symmetry, the domain, the range, minimum or maximum, and then minimum or maximum value, the interval for increasing, and the interval for decreasing. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight questions along with the fact, and I believe on this one on the test, this is not on your review guide, but on the test, they also ask you for the y-intercept as a point. So just an FYI for those of you that are watching this video. All right, let's answer all these questions and we'll graph it in the end here. Axis of symmetry is a formula. It's x equals negative b over 2a, so negative 6 divided by 3 times 2, or 2 times 3, sorry, I get x to equal negative 1. Again, your vertex then, negative 1. I'm going to plug negative 1 back in. So negative 1 squared times 3 plus 6 times negative 1 minus 4, I get negative 7. So now I'm going to go ahead and go over here and do the picture and then we'll answer all the questions from there. So negative 1, negative 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Using my counting principle, over 1, up 3, over 2, up 12, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, right there. So there's the picture. Again, graphing calculators, XY charts, counting methods, those are all good methods to graph. Now, let's answer some questions. The domain would be all real numbers. Range, y values greater than or equal to negative 7. It has a minimum. The minimum value is negative 7 then. 
increasing and decreasing. I talk about this being um, a situation where you go at it from left to right. So on this side, it's negative infinity to negative 1. And from this side, it's from negative 1 to positive infinity. The question is, which one is it increasing or decreasing? It is decreasing on the left, and it is increasing on the right. The y-intercept is always the zero value of x. It's always c. So that's a throw-in question also on this particular question. Any, hopefully you guys understand that. If you have any questions, make sure you talk to your teacher. But that is standard form. Now we're going to do the exact same thing in vertex form. So we still have vertex, x is a symmetry, domain, range, max or min, maximum or minimum value. We still have increasing, maybe I'll write this one out, decreasing. Again, everything starts with the vertex. This one's actually in vertex form. Negative 3, comma 5. Notice that the x value of the vertex and the y value of the vertex, that makes the axis of symmetry x equals negative 3. And I'm going to graph from there. So negative 3. 5, it's a downward parabola, so over 1, down 2, over 2, down 8. Again, those of you that don't use the counting method and just use XY charts, by all means, that's fine. Domain, all real numbers. Range, Y is less than or equal to 5, which means there's a maximum value of 5. Increasing and decreasing. This side is negative infinity to negative 3. That's the x value that it changes. This side then would be from negative 3 to positive infinity. The question becomes which side is increasing now and which side is decreasing. This side is going up. Okay, so that is the increasing side and the decreasing side. Okay, I always think about it as a roller coaster. You're going to go up this side and down that side. Intercept form. Again, same questions now. Vertex, axis of symmetry, domain, the range, max or min, max or minimum value. I'm going to abbreviate to increasing, decreasing, and there's a throw-in question on this one as well, x-intercepts. All right, let's start with the uh, the... Let's actually start with the x-intercepts, the values that make the parentheses 0. So negative 2 gets you a 0, and positive 6 gets you a 0. So on the graph right now, I already know negative 2, 0, 6, 0. Now, how do I find the axis of symmetry? The axis of symmetry is the halfway point between these two. So negative 2 and 6 add together make 4, so halfway is 2. Plug 2 in to the original question. 2 plus 2 would be 4. Negative 4, I get negative 16. I get positive 16. Okay, so that does go off my graph. So I'm just going to put it over here. But ultimately, this is the graph that we would be looking for. Okay, domain, all real numbers. Range, all values less than or equal to 16. It has a maximum then, a maximum value of 16. Again, we got to figure out which side is which. This one is negative infinity to 2. This side is from 2 to positive infinity. Where am I getting the 2 from? The vertex. Okay, so 2, everything goes all the way up till it gets to 2 on the x axis or the x, and then it goes, starts going back down. Now, from left to right, this side is increasing which makes this side decreasing. So again, extra question on there. What are the x-intercepts? They do want those as points, and it will say that on the test. Okay, state as a point. Last year, 300 people attended the Franklin Drama Club Winter Play. The ticket price was $8. The club advisor estimates that 30 fewer people would attend if a $2 increase. This can be modeled by the function. Now, they want to find the actual vertex to find the maximum income. So now, what are the intercepts? 
Well, this is negative 4, 0. It's the value that makes that parentheses 0. And this one would be at 10, 0. So now the vertex is the halfway point in between those. So I get 3. And then I plug 3 in for all the x's. So 300 uh, minus 3 times 30 times 8 plus... I get 2940 using my calculator quickly there. So the maximum income is 2940. Now for the hard question. What is the actual price of the new ticket? Well, here was the price before. If I raise this by 3 increments, I get 8 plus 2 times 3, which would make a $14. Okay, so that was a hard question. A lot of people get that one wrong on the test. Please make sure you look that over. Notice the 3, 294 means how many increments it's being raised. Okay, so if it's being raised 3 increments, the actual price is now going to be $14. Write an equation of the parabola given a vertex and a point. First, you have to understand vertex form. So this would be K. So y is equal to a x plus 2 quantity squared plus 5. Now, plug the point in. So negative 7 for y, negative 4 for x. Um, I get 4a plus 5. Subtract 5. I get an A value of negative 3. So the answer to this question, I'm going to write it kind of going down sideways over here, is negative 3, X plus 2 squared plus 5. So this is the equation given that vertex and that point. Next one. Now I'm given an x-intercept of negative 5 and 1. And I actually don't like it written that way, but I think that is the way it is written on the test. So now I need x plus 5 as an intercept and x minus 1 as an intercept. So those are the values that would make zeros. Then I want to plug in my points now. 3 for y, negative 2 for x. So now a, this would be 3, negative 3, so I get 9a. a would be negative 1 third. So we're again, writing it down the side here, y is equal to 1 third x plus 5, x minus 1. Next one. This is the hardest of the group. Okay, You need to be able to understand this is going to be in standard form, and I have to create an equation for each one of those. So 1 equals a times negative 1 squared plus b times negative 1 plus c. So that gets me 1 equals a minus b plus c. I'm going to skip then to doing these a little bit faster. Negative 3 equals 9a, because that's x squared a, plus 3b, because that's b times x, plus c. And then the last one would be 6 equals 16a plus 4b plus c again. All right, so now this is going to take a little bit more room. I need to lose, it's a three equation, three unknown. These are your three equations. I now want to use uh, elimination. So I am now going to take these two and eliminate C. So if I did um, 1 equals A minus B plus C, and then positive 3, negative 9A, negative 3B, and negative C. So I multiplied this one times negative 1. I get 4, negative 8A minus 4B. Now, I want to take the middle one and the bottom one there. All right. So, again, I'm going to multiply this one by negative 1 again. Negative 9a, negative 3b, minus c, and then 6. 16a plus 4b plus c cancels. 9 equals 7a plus b. Scrolling down now, I'm going to take those two equations. I'm going to multiply this one times 4. 36 equals 28a plus 4b. 4 equals negative 8a minus 4b. Cancels. 40 equals 20a. Divide by 20. a equals 2. 
If I know that a equals 2, I can now take that back somewhere else. So 9 equals 7 times 2 plus b. 14, subtract 14, I get b to be negative 5. And now I go back into any of the equations and now try to find c. So if I go back, let's say, to the top one, 1 equals a minus b plus c. So I get 1 equals 7 plus c. c would equal negative 6. So now I've hit the finish line. Now I just need to write out my equation. I got y equals a x squared plus b x plus c. If you have any questions, this is basically what your test will be like. Uh, please refer to your homework assignments. Please refer to your notes. And I wish you all the best as you prepare for this test.